Hi all, welcome to GrapeCity Documents webinar. We are pleased to announce the v6.2 release and today I will be covering the key highlights of this release. My name is Shilpa Sharma. I am product manager for GrapeCity Documents. If you have any queries related to the new features, please email me at this address. Before I move on with the agenda of the webinar, let me give you an overview of what GrapeCity Documents is about. So with trillions of data flowing over the web, you need tools to extract data or work with data or uh, tools that can help you convert data into meaningful documents of certain format or tools that can help you load those documents, uh, modify, save them back. So uh, you want to store these documents for long term usage or share within the organization or uh, share uh, over the web. So GrapeCity Documents is a set of document APIs that helps to create those documents, edit them and save them back uh, and uh, also uh, help you to convert documents of one format to another. All this you can do within uh, .NET application or Java application and uh, files like Excel, PDF, images and docx files, these are the file formats that are supported. These APIs do not depend on Acrobat or MS Office Suite. Also included are document viewers for PDF, images, Excel, CSV and spreadsheet files. Um, document APIs and viewers included in GRIPC documents are GRIPC documents for PDF or a GC PDF. Uh, this is our PDF API to help to work with PDF documents and included within this package is GRIPC documents PDF viewer or GC PDF viewer. It's a JavaScript based uh, viewer that helps to view PDF file in your web applications. Included in this uh, package is also GRIPC documents for Excel.NET and Java. So GCXL.NET and Java, these are our Excel APIs, helps to work with Excel documents modify, save them back, convert them to other formats. Included with GCXL.NET and GCXL Java packages is GRIPCity Documents Data Viewer or GC Data Viewer. It's our JavaScript based uh, data viewer that helps to view data related files. Um, GRIPCity Documents for Word or GC Word is also included in GRIPCity Documents. Uh, it is a Word API uh, that helps to create Word documents, load existing documents, modify, save them back and convert them to other formats. GC Imaging or GRIPC Documents for Imaging is our Imaging API, helps to load images, create images and add a lot of image processing uh, effects over the images. And uh, included with GC Imaging is GRIPC Documents Image Viewer, JavaScript based image viewer and editor to view and edit images. If you want to have a look on more details about these document APIs and viewers, please visit this link. So this is the agenda of today's webinar. In GCPDF, we have made certain improvements in processing existing PDF documents that are produced by other software, not by GCPDF. There are certain API additions related to this feature, which I'll be covering in the next few slides. In GCPDF Viewer, we have made certain enhancements uh, to the document list panel and have added certain properties. In GC Excel, we now support spreadjs.sjs file format in GC Excel Java. In GC Data Viewer, we support uh, the .sjs file format uh, in the viewer. And in GC Word, we now support adding Office Math content to Word documents and conversion to or from Math ML content. And in GC Image Viewer, we support new paint and text tools that will help you draw over images or add text over images. Starting with new features in GC PDF, in this release, we have made certain improvements in processing existing PDF documents that are not produced by GC PDF, but by some other software. Uh, such documents may not be strictly compliant with PDF documents, but uh, uh, such documents can now be loaded and saved using GCPDF. Uh, PDF documents which have custom data that is not part of PDF spec, even those kind of data will now be preserved uh, using GCPDF. Um, and the average speed of loading PDF documents has also been improved in this release. Uh, with this improvement, uh, there are certain other additions in the API that uh, will help you to solve certain scenarios. Uh, one of them being uh, working with password protected files 
without specifying the password and there are certain situations where you don't know the password or you don't specify it yet you need to modify it um, so new decryption options class has been introduced uh, which can be passed in the gcpdf document.load method uh, when loading an encrypted pdf uh, and uh, following this there are two uh, properties uh, decryption options dot throw exception if invalid password it's a flag uh, if set to false it will allow loading a password protected pdf without specifying the password and there's another property uh, decryption options dot throw exception if unsupported security options so if there's a pdf document that is loaded into gcpdf and the security handler is unknown or broken uh, such a document will still be loaded into gcpdf and it can be modified um, if you want to make certain modifications to pdf documents there are certain limitations uh, which are due to uh, the limitations of the pdf spec uh, you can refer to the documentation to know uh, what uh, what features you can modify in pdf documents when you do not specify the password as you see over here uh, there is also there's some code uh, this loads uh, a pdf document uh, it defines the decryption options and sets both these properties to false uh, so it, you don't have to specify the password and uh, even if the security handler is broken or are not supported the file will still be loaded because both the properties have been set to false now when loaded um, you just add any annotation to the pdf document and just save the document and you see here uh, this is the original file which is password protected but you have loaded it into gcpdf uh, document without specifying the password and you have added an annotation uh, so this is the resulting file which was password protected but you have added an annotation to it uh, and this is the new file you see over here another addition to gcpdf is the introduction of new classes methods and interfaces in the pdf.spec and pdf.wrappers namespaces these new uh, classes uh, they help to work with primitive objects of pdf specification like uh, pdf array pdf pool uh, pdf dictionary and so on uh, when you work with pdf documents uh, document info or annotation or page these are all high level objects of pdf document uh, internally like document info it's a pdf dictionary there are certain uh, properties which which uh, are accessible using this uh, document info uh, object but there are also certain properties that are part of the pdf but they are not present in the pdf spec as such such as source modified property now uh, the introduction of these new classes uh, to pdf.spec namespace will now allow developers to access edit such uh, custom items in the pdf uh, document um, i will also cover more uh, with an example in the next slide so a customer requested to directly retrieve the stream of uh, images from pdf document and access some low level properties related to each image in the document uh, which is otherwise not accessible uh, using the high level objects so gcpdf uh, includes new pdf image info class it lists all uh, it lists uh, positions of all images where they appear in the pdf document and uh, this class is represented by pdf image or base object uh, it includes a lot of methods uh, which allow to get properties or data of the underlying pdf stream object uh, in this code you see uh, pdf has been loaded into gcpdf document and uh, then uh, from the document you get all the images into the pdf image info list and uh, then you retrieve the first image uh, into pdf image base uh, class object and then you start uh, retrieving properties from this object so you get the uh, object id you get the uh, pdf stream info and from that you can uh, get uh, information about the filter compression format you can get information about the black and white information of the image stream the color of the image stream which is represented by bits per component or uh, information about uh, each mask uh, of the image used in the pdf document 
and this is the output that you see here these are all the underlying low, low level properties of the images used in pdf document which are which have been retrieved using uh, the new api moving on with new features in gc pdf viewer uh, so in gc pdf viewer you have the document list panel from where you can directly uh, render documents or open documents um, into the viewer now in v6.2 release we have enhanced each of the uh, tiles that you can add to the document list panel where each tile is a document list item type with new properties uh, name which is a display name path which is the absolute or uh, relative url to a pdf document the title is the item tooltip and the preview content the html content that uh, uh, needs to be used as the preview content in the document list uh, the other client-side properties and methods uh, like document list URL, add document list panel and load document list methods have been enhanced to accept this new document list item type as a parameter, uh, which will help it, uh, which will help to uh, de define the list of document items. So this is our online sample browser, which lists uh, different samples that can be uh, implemented using GCPDF viewer. Uh, so we have implemented the new document list panel enhancement. Uh, so as you he see here, there are various styles now displayed in the document list panel with icons as well as with some uh, title and text. Uh, each of these styles now uh, contain a link to uh, any PDF document that you need to open uh, into the viewer. Uh, and each style can now be defined using a uh, document list URL property that is already that already exists, which defines different document list item types, where each type has a property path, which will uh, add the path to the report, the title that will be displayed, uh, and the preview content will uh, denote uh, what uh, HTML content needs to be drawn, which is over here. Uh, and uh, yeah and uh, so you can open the pdf files from uh, directly from these tiles and you can define a different kind of content uh, within these tiles as you see over here uh, uh, in the html source you can also open an image uh, and you can provide the image path from which you want to load the image and that should appear as an icon in this style so these are different enhancements that we have performed with document list panel you can have a look on our uh, online uh, sample browser to view the enhancement moving on to new features in gc excel in v6.2 release we now support uh, sjs file format in gc excel java the open and save methods of the workbook class have uh, now been uh, enhanced to support .sjs files. Uh, also added is new option sjs in the open file format and save file format enums. This is while opening or saving a file. Uh, new classes sjs open options and sjs save options have also been added. They help to specify which spreadsheet features to include or exclude while importing the uh, or exporting the .sjs files. Uh, with the support of this format, you will now be able to perform faster conversion of large Excel files to .sjs format. You can save uh, exp or exported files with a smaller footprint. Uh, you can import or export uh, Excel or Spread.js features to or from Spread.js. You can generate a single JSON string from the JSON file zipped in the .sjs files. Uh, you can also customize opening and saving of spreadjs.sjs files uh, using various options. So in this example, uh, we have uh, loaded .sjs file into GC Excel workbook object. And uh, before loading, we have set the SJS open options. Uh, and we have set, uh, set include formulas to false and set include styles to false. So no formulas or styles will be loaded and saved. Uh, when done using GC Excel. Uh, so this is the original .sjs file and uh, it has formulas and styles but after loading into GC Excel with SJS open options uh, the formulas and styles are not loaded. In GC Data Viewer you can now load spreadjs.sjs files either through UI or through code. Uh, in the UI open dialog uh, the data type now accepts SJS file type. 
and uh, if open through client side code uh, the open file method now accepts file type dot sjs enum uh, and uh, sjs open options are also introduced they can be provided as a third parameter uh, to specify which features to load uh, from stretch.js while opening the dot sjs file so as you see a file has is being opened uh, through ui and through code uh, you can uh, open uh, a file uh, by using uh, the file type as .sjs option uh, and you can also use sjs underscore open options uh, while opening the file in this open file method um, and uh, you call the viewer object and load uh, this file uh, into the viewer so moving on with new features in gc word as you know that uh, many documents use mathematical symbols formulas or equations um, and uh, these are not only in, uh, used in scientific documents but also many general purpose documents so uh, in this release we add the support for office math content and conversion tour from uh, mathml uh, content uh, gc word now supports creating and editing office math content in word documents and two new classes have been introduced that uh, they represent the office math content in gc word OMath paragraph class it represents a paragraph with the office math content while OMath class represents an inline office math zone it can be included either in OMath paragraph or in a regular paragraph to add certain kind of content office math content uh, there are specialized classes like OMath function OMath equation array OMath radical and many more they are provided to represent the various math structures uh, living inside OMath zone and these classes are all derived from the common abstract OMAT struct base. If you want to access Office Math content, the new properties have been added to the range base class. And to easily add built in equations, which are supported by MS Word, convenient add insert methods are provided to uh, the range base, OMAT paragraph, OMAT, and OMAT element classes. They will accept OMAT built in equation enum value, uh, which identifies the desired equation. And a utility MathML converter class has also been introduced. It will allow easy conversion between GC Word or Math content and MathML. So this is the code to add a mathematical equation to Word document. You add an OMath paragraph uh, and an OMath zone where you add specific run which has single text object uh, with single formatting. So you add that to the OMath zone. Um, then uh, there's also another class which helps to uh, add integrants or sum ends of the equation with superscripts or subscripts. So as you see, every part of the equation has a separate method with the office math class in GC Word. If you want to add a fraction, you can just call the OMath or add fraction method and then define the numerator and the denominator and so on. So you, you can have a look uh, at our detailed documentation to know more about uh, the different classes available with the Office Math support in GC Word. Uh, in v6.2 release, we also add new image editing tools to GC Image Viewer. As you know that drawing over an image or adding text to the image uh, is very important to communicate certain message or, uh, in, in, or enhance the image with more information or descriptions so uh, in v6.2 we add the paint tools and the text tools they are available in the main toolbar of the viewer there are various uh, paint tools uh, available for example the pencil tool will uh, help you to draw freehand strokes without anti-aliasing the brush tool will help to draw freehand brush strokes with smooth edges and anti-aliasing uh, the clone stamp tool will help you to clone certain part of the image to some other area. Uh, the eraser tool will help you to, uh, to erase part of the image. And available with these uh, tools are various settings to uh, set the size of um, the uh, tools like the pencil, brush, eraser, clone stamp tools. Um, then you can also set the color of the pencil or brush tools. You can set uh, use original image toggle button. Uh, you can uh, uh, use this option to use the original image combined with your recent edits as a background source for uh, new edits. And uh, there are other options like undo, redo, or apply changes um, when you have uh, made uh, adjustments 
or to cancel the changes to discard any modifications and revert back to the original image so this is rgc image viewer uh, two new tools would be available uh, in the main toolbar the paint tools and uh, the text tools if you click on the paint tools then all the paint tools would be available in the secondary toolbar the pencil tool the brush tool clone stamp eraser the settings with respect to these tools uh, the color for pencil or brush can be set from here uh, use original image uh, undo redo options and apply and cancel uh, buttons to apply or cancel the edits so if you choose the pencil tool and you choose any color and the size so you can start drawing over the image and uh, if you want to apply the brush stroke and increase its size you can also use the brush stroke note that this will have the smooth edges uh, let's undo the operation additionally if you want to clone stamp a part of the image just uh, choose the clone stamp tool and you can also adjust the size of the clone stamp tool and you just alt click over an area and you just start drawing and that part of the image would be cloned at some other location also included in gc image viewer are new text tools uh, the text tools uh, toolbar contains the text tool and the related settings like font size, font name, text color, bold, italic styles, um, etc. You can press the text tool and click on the desired position to start typing. Uh, you can press Ctrl Enter to finish editing. Uh, you can move the selected text or add another one by using the text tool button again. Uh, you can also change the properties for multiple selected objects at once and if you want to uh, modify a text or uh, type in anything uh, in a text object you can just double click it to activate the text editor so uh, we have also added new text tools to gc image viewer in the main toolbar there will be a new icon um, if you press it it will open all the text tools uh, you can just choose the text tool and start typing um, and uh, you can press ctrl enter to stop uh, editing and you can uh, just select it and set any font size uh, or a font name or bold or italic or color and uh, you can uh, move this object to any place double click to modify or start typing yeah and these are all the options available with the text tools with this we come to the end of the webinar hope you enjoyed the new features part of v6.2 release to read full details of the release please visit these blog links they also have links to the new demos and documentation related to the new features thank you